So, yesterday we ended up, we were talking about how waves behave when they go from one medium to another. That is, they cross a boundary, right? So there's a few little rules here that we need to, well, memorize. Okay? There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You just have to memorize these rules about what happens to a wave when it goes from one medium to another, okay? And we talked about yesterday how some of the wave energy will be transmitted. It will just go through. Most of it does that. It goes through into the next medium. Okay? Some of it will be reflected off of the boundary. Okay? And one of the rules we're going to learn is when is it reflected upright and when is it reflected inverted. Okay? We'll talk about that today. That's the rule you'll have to memorize. Okay? And obviously, uh, so we got partial reflection. Some of it's transmitted, some of it's reflected. Okay? And we have to learn those pulses or how those pulses look okay? depending on the situation. Okay, so in this first situation here, I've got a pulse that's up. Okay, or upright, and it is headed towards a boundary between this more dense medium and this less dense medium. That means it's going to go from a slow medium to a fast medium. Okay, a transverse wave travels faster in a less dense medium. The opposite is true for longitudinal waves, but we're only going to deal with transverse waves. Okay, so we're going from more dense to less dense. Okay, when we encounter the boundary, there's a few ways that we can tell that the new medium is faster or less dense, okay? And the first couple of waves we've already talked about. When the wave changes speed and speeds up, it also gets longer. So we can actually look at the structure of the wave if we have a good diagram that shows that, okay? And we can see that the wave is longer. It might also be shorter, okay? Like, I mean, in terms of amplitude, it can't be longer and shorter, <laughs> shorter vertically, okay? Longer uh, horizontally. It, um, because it's going to be stretched out. Okay? So that's kind of one of the ways we can tell that the next medium was a little bit faster. But the other way is to look at the reflected pulse, because some energy is going to be reflected at the boundary. If it's going for, to a faster or less dense medium, the reflected pulse will be upright. Okay? That means it'll look the same as the incident pulse. Okay? So if the incident pulse was up, the reflected pulse will be up. If the reflected pulse was down, or the incident pulse was down, the reflected pulse will be down. Okay? Now, if the opposite is true, if it's going from the fast medium to the slow medium, less dense to more dense, okay, then we're going to see a shorter wave. Okay? Sometimes we'll see it also taller, but not always. Okay? Sometimes when you go from a less dense medium to a more dense medium, so much of the wave energy is reflected that your amplitude actually decreases, even though your wavelength is short. Okay, so there's no kind of hard and fast rule on what happens with amplitude, okay? but there is a hard and fast rule on what happens with wavelength. Okay? Now, the reflected pulse will be inverted in this situation. Okay? So I can always tell if something went to a slower or more dense medium because it will be shorter, and the reflected pulse will be inverted. Okay? If it goes to a faster medium, the, pulse, the transmitted pulse will be longer, and the reflected pulse will be upward. Okay. Sometimes you'll also get like a worksheet or a question that will say, instead of upright, it'll say erect. But I don't say that because that's, yeah, that's the everybody in and that's why I don't use, I use upright because I don't like the chuckles. Okay. It's awkward. Okay. All right. Is there making sense to everybody? Okay. Um, all right. So that's just a rule we have to memorize. Okay. We have to know that because on your unit exam, okay, you're going to get, um, you know, exactly like this. A diagram is going to say, was the second medium more or less dense? Okay. And you're going to have to look at the reflected pulses, the transmitted pulses, okay, figure it out. All right. Everybody good with that? Okay. So for reflection, if wave energy reflects from a more dense medium, okay, the reflected wave will be inverted. So water off a rock. Okay, we, I showed you that little video okay, that I took on the beach, okay? and we, you could see that as waves came in, sometimes waves went back, and those waves went back inverted. Okay? They reflected off the shore, which is more dense than the water, so we got little ref inverted waves going back. Okay? Um, so reflection from a less dense medium results in an upright or right side up wave. Okay? That would be like sound or light going from water to air. Okay? There would be um, that. Okay, I'm going to show you a video here to do with reflection. Okay. I want you to think about this. If you stand in front of a mirror, how far behind the mirror does your reflection stand? 
the same distance. Okay? So if I'm two meters in front of the mirror, my reflection is two meters behind the mirror, or at least they look that way. Okay? Now, the same is true for any reflection. Right? So if I want to shoot this bank shot, what I have to imagine is that this ball, its reflection, will be the same distance behind the bumper. So if I draw myself a line okay, from the ball to the bumper, okay, like so, and then I go behind the bumper that far, whoops, okay, then I go behind the bumper that far, Wherever a line between the ball, my cue ball, and that point crosses the bumper is where I need to aim. And then I will always hit the bank shot correctly because of the law of reflection. The law of reflection says that the angle between the incident particle or wave, that would be this one, this would be our angle of incidence, and our angle of reflection are always equal. Okay, that's the law of reflection. That's why this little trick will always work. Okay? So if I draw a straight line from this ball to the point behind the table, okay, wherever that line crosses the bumper or intersects the bumper is where I need to hit the ball to, exactly as that diagram shows. All right? So on the bumper of any billiard table are little markers, okay, like little diamonds usually, okay, along the bumper. So you use those to measure. Or if you're playing pairs, you get your partner to sight for you. Okay, this is how me and my buddy used to do this all the time. Okay, so I would be here, okay, getting ready to shoot the bank shot, and he would stand as far behind the bumper as the ball was in front of it with his pool cue looking very casual, so no one kind of picked up what we were doing, okay? And the pool cue was my sighting line, okay? So he would stand right here, okay, with the pool cue, and I would sight to the pool cue, okay? Wherever that line crossed the bumper, that's where I would hit the ball to. Could hit a bank shot every single time. That would suck if you did a bank shot and it lined up right where the hole was. Well, then you can't hit that bank shot, yeah. Then there's no shot to be had because there's no bumper there, and you'll scratch. And, and Okay? But this is how you can run a table, okay? especially if you're playing against drunks. Okay? Their, their you know, shot plane starts to deteriorate okay? and uh, they become less accurate. Right? But if you can do that, it works every time until so you get the one guy that realizes and figures out what you're doing. And then they get really angry. And we're like, but it's physics. And he doesn't understand because it's just angry. Drunk. Yeah, wants to fight. Yeah. Okay. But that's how you can hit a bank shot. Okay? It'll work every single time. You can just sight that way, okay? try it the next time you're at a, at a pool hall or if you got a pool table at home, that'll always work. Okay? It has to because it's a law of reflection. Okay? All right, so that's reflection. Law of reflection, angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So if it comes in straight on, it's gonna come back straight off. Okay? If it comes in at an angle, the angle it goes off at will be the same. Okay? We were talking about that the other day, I think. I think it was this class I was talking about when you're trying to like, you know, use the screen on your phone to shine the sun in somebody's eyes. You guys have ever done that? Yeah. Okay, so you know, if, you're, if the window is open and the sun's coming through, right, you just go like this and you catch the sun on, the, on your screen and then you reflect it in somebody's eyes. Now you're all going to try that. But it's angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So you got to get the angle right, okay, so that the outgoing waves, the reflected waves, go at the person. This is also how, um, like in the uh, in the military, how they'll signal uh, like a plane. They all carry a mirror, just a plane mirror, and they'll do that, and they'll they'll flash the plane, okay, with just the sun, with just a reflection. Okay. Um, all right. Transmission. So this is what happens to the wave that goes through. Okay. We just talked about the wave that gets reflected, or the wave energy that gets reflected. Okay. The wave energy that goes through is always going to be upright. Going from one medium to another is not going to change the transmitted wave. If it was an upright wave, it's going to be upright in the new medium. Okay? That will never change. Right? Frequency also doesn't change. We've only said that about 100 times. Okay? Frequency of the wave will never change. 
Okay? The velocity will change because the medium is what controls the velocity. The wavelength will change as well. Okay? The amplitude also changes from one medium to another. That is going to be dependent on how much wave energy was reflected at the boundary. Okay? Sometimes, like if we're talking about you know, water going from deep to shallow, you don't really get much of a reflection there because it's a slow transition and the wave the amplitude just gets bigger. But if you've got a wave on a spring going to a string, okay, that's going to be an immediate change and you're going to get a lot of wave energy reflected, so your amplitude's going to be kind of variable. Okay, uh, just terminology. Sometimes rather than drawing a whole bunch of waves like this, we just draw an arrow that represents the waves when, and the direction they're going. We call that arrow a wave ray. All right, and the normal line, they were talking about that in the law of reflection, okay? So if this is our boundary here, okay, and the waves are coming in like this, they're gonna go off like this, angle of incidence, lethal angle of reflection, those angles are measured from this imaginary line called the normal, okay? It's just an imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the boundary, okay? Okay, and Okay, so we talked about that already. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Okay, so reflect, or incident ray and reflected ray, those are important terms. Incident means the one that's coming in. Okay, reflected is obviously the outgoing one. Okay, incident is also used with refraction. Okay, so incident always means the incoming wave. All right, now refraction. Okay, refraction happens when the waves come in obliquely. That means not straight on, not at 90 degrees. Okay? If they come in obliquely, like we were talking about yesterday with the light, part of the wave will get reflected, or sorry, will get slowed down before the rest of the wave. So this edge, okay, this edge of this wave here is in the new medium, and as a result, it's slowed down. But this part of the wave out here is still in the fast medium. Okay? And so it's still gonna keep going at the original speed. How do I know the white medium is faster than the blue medium? Lines are further apart. Lines are further apart. So the wavelength is bigger. is bigger. Okay, and if the wavelength is bigger, it means the speed is also bigger. Okay, so it's going faster out there. The other way that I know that, and this is something you'll also learn in Physics 30, is if I draw a normal line, okay, on here, that normal that we talked about a minute ago, okay, and I show a wave ray that's representing my incident waves, it'll look like this. But a wave ray representing my, um, my refracted waves will look like this. They bend towards the normal. Okay, if they slow down, they bend towards the normal when they slow. Okay, if it was going the other way, speeding up, it would bend away from the normal. Okay, so there's two ways that we can tell that. So this was our um, angle of incidence. This was our angle of refraction. Okay, and that angle is smaller, so it bent towards the normal. If they go the other way, if they go the other way, so here's a array representing my now incident waves. Okay. My incident waves look like that, but my refracted waves look like this. They bent away from my normal line. All right, everybody with me there? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show you some stuff here on refraction. Okay. Basically, you just need to know that what refraction is. Refraction is the bending of a wave because it goes into a new medium, not all at once or obliquely. Okay, so if we're going from a fast to a slow medium, we see that those waves get closer together. Okay, out here they were further apart. Okay, if I'm going from air to glass, okay, we can see that this is my angle of incidence. It's quite large, okay, versus the angle of refraction, okay, in the new medium, which is considerably smaller. Those waves bent towards the normal because they slowed down. Okay, and then this was the uh, example I was talking about yesterday, okay, where, um, the light coming from the fish comes up to the surface and then it speeds up so it bends this way towards my eyes. But my eyes and my brain believe that light travels in straight lines. So to me, it looks like the fish is here, even though it's considerably deeper than that. Okay, and so if I'm spearfishing, 
okay? And I aim for where I see the fish. I'm not going to hit it because that's not where it is. It's deeper than that, okay? So when I put the spear in the water, it's gonna be like the straight stick bed stick thing in the, in the video, right? It's, it's gonna look straight and it's gonna go in the water and it's gonna bend, okay? It doesn't really bend, but it looks that way, okay? Making sense? All right, so that's refraction. The result of waves going across the boundary at an angle. Okay, and then if I go from slow to fast, I can see again, okay, these waves got further apart than these ones did because they sped up and my angle of incidence is smaller than my angle of refraction. When they go into the faster medium, they bend away from the normal. The angle gets bigger. Okay, and we see the same thing, okay, like we had in here, there's a triangular piece of plastic, okay, that is lowering the depth Okay, of the water. So you can see out here the wavelength is that long, but in here the wavelength is shorter. Okay, because these waves are slower. And in fact, the shape of the waves gets a curve in the middle of them. Anywhere where it's going across okay, the triangle. Okay, they're they're well that was terrible, but I missed a wave somewhere in there. Okay, so they're getting closer together because they're slowing down. Okay, uh, similar thing here. These waves are all coming in, but this area here is shallower, okay? so they're slowing down and they're turning in. Okay? Like these waves out here are like this, okay? but if I move that line, if I move that line down, that's not the way this wave looks. Okay? This wave is getting turned because part of it encountered a lower depth. Okay, then, then out here, this was much deeper out here, so these waves were able to go faster, and as a result, okay, they spread right out or fanned out because these waves here slowed down and got closer together. Okay, so one end of the wave more affected than the other. All right, this is the last one. It's not in your notes, so you're going to have to add it. Okay, diffraction. Bending of waves around an object or through a narrow opening, resulting in a change in shape of the wave. And if you can draw a rough diagram of what you see here and then I'll explain it once you've had a chance to do that. All right, so diffraction is the one property or behavior that we've talked about today that is unique to waves. Particles can reflect. Okay? If I throw a ball at the wall, it reflects off the wall. Okay? If I you know, have, like we were talking about yesterday, if you got, you know, with refraction, if you got a wheel out in a snow drift out on the side of the road and the rest of your car was not in the snow, it would slow down and pull it to the side. That's refraction. Particles do that too. Okay? Waves and particles reflect. Waves and particles refract. Okay? But particles do not show diffraction. Okay? Only waves show diffraction, which actually made it a super important behavior of waves that proved that light was a wave. Because for a very long time, well-respected physicists, Newton included, believed light was a particle. Okay? And the reason they believed light was a particle is because it didn't show, or at least they thought, it didn't show this behavior, which they knew only waves could show. Okay? So, diffraction is the bending of a wave either around an object or through a narrow opening. Okay? So, if I have a whole bunch of, like, let's just say I have like a bag full of like, little plastic balls, okay? and I just empty that bag and throw the whole thing towards the door, okay? the balls are going to go through the door, and they're only going to go like this. Okay? I'm only going to see those plastic balls in that narrow thing. They're not gonna bend like this and go out and go into all places. They can only go through the door. They can only go in the path of the door. And, and does light do that too? Like if I have the lights off in here and we open the door, the light that comes in from the hallway only comes in in a beam through the door, right? It doesn't spread out, okay? And that's why people said light is a particle. It doesn't diffract. Otherwise, you wouldn't have that thing that follows you around everywhere. Your shadow. If light was a, was a wave, you wouldn't have a shadow because waves would diffract around you and you wouldn't cast a shadow. Okay? I also wouldn't be able to do this and block the sun out. Okay? Like, you know, when it gets bright, you're like, oh, God, you put your hand up there. If, if light's a wave, it should diffract around my hand and it should still be bright, which would be weird. Okay? 
But light is a wave. It does diffract. The problem is, is that people had no idea how fast light moved and how incredibly short its wavelength is. So it does diffract, but we can't observe it over the tiny distances that we can see. Okay? And I mean tiny distances, like even, even considering like a like a, an eclipse. Okay? We don't even really notice the diffraction of the sun around the moon okay? over a much greater distance. It still casts a shadow. That's why there's why we get an eclipse. Okay? But light does diffract. It's just hard to see because it travels so fast and its wavelength is so short that the opening or the object has to be so small for it to even be observable. Okay? So with sound waves, I'll show you what I mean here in just a minute with light waves, but okay, with sound waves, even if I buy this terrible ticket okay, and I end up behind this pillar, I can still hear the music partly because it would reflect off of other surfaces, but also because when those waves hit this pillar, they're going to diffract around it. Yeah, they'll get slowed down, okay? But they'll eventually get around and reform on the other side. Will there be a little bit of a sound shadow? Sure, okay? But I'm still gonna hear stuff, okay? Everybody okay with that idea? So in this situation, would the wave break and then Kind of, so yeah. It, it, I mean, it has to go around the object, but it quickly reforms on the other side, but with that dip. So is yeah. there is there some like energy that's lost? Oh, for sure. There's going to be some that reflects off of that surface. And you can kind of see that with this diagram here. So these are just different um, like rocks out in the ocean, right? The waves are coming in, and it's a narrow opening for those waves. You can see that they're kind of straight on this side, but on this side, they're all curved. Okay? And there's actually two different sets of curves. Right? Some of these are waves that have diffracted over here. Some of them are waves that have diffracted through here. And some are waves that just hit this and diffracted around it. Okay? So then if you're like on the other side, of the <coughs> other side of the room than I am, and I yell and you can still hear me, how are the sound waves getting to, how are the sound waves getting to you if there's like a wall between us? Because they can go like right to they just go right through the wall. Well, I mean, there's certainly going to be some transmission through the wall. Like this wall here between uh, this room and the science office is not insulated. Right. It's paper thin. Okay. Um, so you know, if someone's in here and talking loudly, we can hear them pretty easily. But that's because the waves are hitting one side of the wall, going through the air in the middle, hitting this side of the wall, and then being transmitted out. It doesn't have to do with diffraction. It's a matter of the, the vibration just passes oh. through many materials. Okay. But example of sound diffracting is when we first moved into this building there were no doors on the bathrooms okay I know it seems weird but there were no doors on the bathrooms okay um, and if I had my door open we could hear every word that was said in the girls bathroom which on many days was incredibly awkward okay because some of the things we heard People really wouldn't have wanted us to, okay? I mean, it's the bathroom after all, okay? And so um, there were times where I had to run and shut the door, okay? Because the waves would come out the bathroom door and they would do this, they would diffract. It's a narrow opening. Then even they would hit my door and do it again. Even if they were just talking? Even if they were just talking. If there wasn't noise in this room, you could hear every word, okay? And sometimes people are like waiting to see who came out. After we'll some of the things we heard. Okay, um, so it was, yeah. I'm glad they put doors on there. Even now, sometimes I can hear what's being said in there. It's, yeah. Keep in mind, sometimes I can hear what's being said in there when you're in there. Okay, something that I don't want to hear. Most of it I don't want to hear. Okay, um, so it's just diffraction. Those sound waves come through the door, which is a narrow opening. They diffract around, right? Like, if I even for Erica, who's sitting right here, okay, if someone's out in the hallway talking, those waves will diffract enough that you'll be able to hear them, not through the wall, but because it diffracts through the door. Okay. So, only waves diffract. Now, um, the person who used this to prove that light was a wave was um, Young's. Okay, and he did Young's double slit experiment, which got him like laughed at by lots of scientists, Newton included. Okay, what Young said is light's a wave, but light travels very fast. Newton knew that because he tried the experiment where his assistant was on a mountain four kilometers away from him and was like opening the lamp and they were trying to time how long it took the light to get there. Okay, so he knew light traveled really fast. 
Okay? He said, but it also has a really short wavelength. And what I've seen with water waves and sound waves is that the amount of diffraction that occurs is related to both the speed the waves travel and the length of the waves. Okay? The longer and slower the wave, the more the diffraction is. Because the, that wave is in contact with the object or the opening for a longer period of time. Okay? So these waves are fairly long. So a single wave from here to here, especially if it's traveling slowly, is going to be in contact with that opening for quite a while. So it's going to have time to pull the edges back and curve the wave. But if the wave is really short and really fast, it gets through that opening like that. Okay? And if the opening doesn't get a chance to curve the edges very much. Okay? So he said, in order to show diffraction of something that's fast and small, the opening also has to be really small. On the order of it needs to be near the wavelength of the waves you're trying to diffract. Now light has an incredibly small wavelength. So what Young's did is he built an apparatus that had two different sets of narrow slits. So that was called the double slit experiment. So he had a, a light source, and then he had a single narrow slit in front of it. Okay? And then a short distance away from that, he had two slits. set up like that. Okay? And it was set up like our two speaker question that we did yesterday. Two sources of waves. Okay? And when those waves come out, there's going to be places where there's constructive interference and destructive interference. With sound, that's loud and quiet. With light, bright. it's bright and dark. Okay? Now, the wavelength of light is too small and light is too fast for you to be able to walk around the room and go, it's dark, it's light, and jump around. And say, that's not going to work. Okay? But what he did is in front of these slits, he put a screen. And on that screen, he said, what's going to happen on this screen is there's going to be a zebra pattern. There's going to be a light pattern in the middle. And then there's going to be light, dark, light, dark. And the light, dark stripes are going to be this long and this far apart. And everyone looked at this and went, you're stupid. You know what the light's going to do? It's going to go through that first slit and hit the next thing, and that's it, the end of your experiment. Man, are you dumb. Because okay? everybody knows that's what light does. Right? Light goes through a narrow opening, you get a beam. That's how you get a beam. You make a narrow opening, and the light only goes through the narrow opening. What, have you, like, did you get dropped on your head? Like that, they, were, they, were, they were really cruel to them. Okay? Because they said, this is silly. We all know light's a particle. You have a shadow. It follows you everywhere. Okay? And Young's like, no, I'm telling you, this is going to work. And they all had to eat crow, big time, because it totally worked. Okay? The light went through this narrow opening and diffracted, okay? which meant the light waves were actually able to reach these two openings. They wouldn't have been able to do that if it only went through as a beam. Okay? And then what he got was two sources of waves. Okay? And they would create patterns of interference. I'm going to move my screen now. Yeah, okay. I didn't do a very good job of drawing the waves, but okay. Right here, right in front of his light source, I got waves overlapping. What am I getting here? Light dark, light dark. Constructive or destructive? Constructive. Bright bar, right in the middle. Okay, and then a then there'd be a dark one right here where there's nothing from the other one. Okay? And then these two were supposed to intersect on my screen, but they didn't. Okay? That would be another light bar, and then a light and a dark, and a light and a dark. Okay? Alternating bands of light and dark. Right? And then he went as far as he went, okay, that was with white light. Now watch, I'm going to use red, and when I use red, the stripes are going to be in different positions, because the wavelength of red light is different than the wavelength of this color light and this color light. Okay? It was based on the wavelength of the light where the bars were. Okay. Proved unequivocally light had to be a wave. If light was a particle, everybody would have been right. And they would have, you know, it would have just gone through the beam and that would have been the end of the experiment. Okay. But the fact that light actually got through to the screen, the only possible source of it being that one, it had to be a wave. It had to have diffracted through those slits. Okay. That sort of makes sense? 
right? We use that in things like polarized sunglasses, okay, and things like that. And we actually used to use it in money. Oh, I don't have the picture here. What I did. Um, our, not our new money, but our old money, all the money had a little circle. Like a little, it almost looked like someone had taken a hole punch to the bill. Okay? There was one little circle in the bills. You guys remember that? Okay. That bill, or that little circle, was a diffraction grating. It was like a, a set of bunch of little slits. And when you shone a light through it, okay, it would, it would tell you the denomination of the bill. It was a counter anti-counterfeiting um, mechanism. Right? Most people didn't have any idea what that little hole was for. Okay? Um, but I actually used it one time because we were selling our truck and um, the guy was paying cash. Right? Well, I didn't want to get a bunch of counterfeit bills and be out you know, a lot of money. So um, I just took from his stack of bills, I took like 10 at random and took a laser pointer. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I don't know you. <laughs> right? And I shone it on the, on the desk. And he's like, oh, I didn't know money did that. I'm like, well, then I'm probably pretty safe that this money is real. And, but I still check 10 bills at random. Don't just check the top one. But he might be smart. Think I'll put a real bill on the top. Okay, so I checked ten at random, okay, or so, and, and they all were good. Okay. I, think it, I thought I had a picture of that somewhere. What does it show? Uh, it shows the denomination. I'll uh, I'll find a picture of it here in just a minute. Um, so yeah, I shine the laser pointer through. Okay. Um, all right. While you guys are working on this, I will find a picture of the laser money. Okay, you'll need your uh, digital workbook out here, guys. Okay, so on page, what page is this? This is page four, right? Yeah. So bottom of page four is where this starts. It's called Waves in One Dimension Worksheet. Okay, and it's basically just some questions about the things we've gone over the last couple of days. So draw a sketch of a trough approaching a fixed end. A fixed end is something that's tied to, like a wall, so the wave can't get into it. A fixed end represents an infinitely dense medium. Okay, so if I make a, a pulse that's going towards it, it's going to reflect back which way? Upright or inverted? Inverted, because it's infinitely dense. It's not going to go into it okay, if it's a fixed end. All right, so that's what I mean by fixed end. All right, so um, just some diagrams, some, some questions there to answer. Okay, I'll have you guys working on that here. There's a few more after that as well. Okay, they're about interference, okay, wave behavior at a boundary. Okay, for these two questions here, the slinky is the heavier or more dense medium than the string, and then this is a light or less dense rope, and this is a heavy or more dense rope okay, that the wave would be going into. Yeah. Okay, and then you got a couple of interference questions here, okay, and I think there's also a two-speaker question on there at the end. Yep. All right, so working on those, I'll find a picture of the laser money. Listen, there's a good chance somebody's trying to hack your website right now. You've got to make sure you're covered. Okay, I'm going to try this laser experiment myself. So if I take okay, so laser, inside the maple leaf was the little circle. It through a $20 bill, that's very cool. It actually shows $20. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. 
there's my piece of paper and I'll shine a laser on the maple leaf. And there's the $20 that shows through. That's very cool. Now let's try it with a five. Okay, here's a five dollar bill. Let's try that one. It's virtually impossible to replicate. And it's hard to see, but it works with that as well. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Okay. Very cool. But it's still not very bright. If only there was maybe some way to make that brighter. Let's try a bigger laser. Okay, one more time. I have my $5 bill set up. And this time, I've got a slightly bigger laser pointing at it. I think he's going to start. Let's see how that works. Hmm. Oh, I would have used the fire extinguisher. What was the fun in that? Hmm. Hmm. Now I have a five dollar bill with a very nice hole. I guess sometimes bigger isn't better. I never watched that one all the way to the end. <laughs> Fascinated with. Okay. All right. Working on those guys. I want to be able to go through those. When we've got 9:36, we've got 12 minutes. I'd like to be able to go through at least the four that are on the board here.
Okay, so if we're looking at these here, guys, okay, if we draw a sketch of a trough approaching a fixed end, okay, that's a trough, that's the fixed end, okay, showing the wave, um, then a second sketch showing the wave after it is reflected off. So there it is going that way, okay, a little while later, it's going to be an upright pulse going back because it's going to be reflected off inverted. Okay. For question number two, before, during, and after complete destructive interference. Okay. So those waves going towards each other, that would be during. That would be where the waves are. Okay. And then after. Okay, waves going on completely unaffected afterwards. All right, for the third one, okay, uh, moving from a faster medium to a slower one. Oh, for the last one, if it was complete destructive interference, wouldn't that cancel each other out? Yeah, they did. Oh, they did. I just drew the dotted lines to show where they are. Yeah, even though, because they're gone, right? Yeah. Okay, is this one moving from fast to slow or slow to fast? Fast to slow, yeah, we've got a shorter, smaller wave in the new medium, okay, and we have, most importantly, an inverted reflection off of the boundary. An inverted reflection always indicates it went to a more dense or slower medium. All right, and number four, okay, pulse is sent along a spring. When it gets to A, what will happen? It will continue to go to it with little to no reflection. Okay, some of it will go through, yeah, but some of it will also be? Reflected. Will that reflection be upright or inverted? Upright. upright. It's going into a less dense medium. It'll be easier. Okay, so our reflection will be upright. When it hits B, B is a fixed end. What's it going to do? Most of it will reflect. But... Yeah, all of it actually will reflect. Okay, and it'll reflect back? Inverted. inverted. Okay, that's all you had to do for those ones. All right, we'll talk about the rest of those tomorrow. Um, and we'll probably end up doing our unit exam review tomorrow, just because it's a short class. Okay? Even though we haven't done standing waves or Doppler effect yet. Okay? That'll be Monday, Tuesday. Okay?